so let us continue uh, discussing strengthening mechanism here i am going to discuss about work hardening or strain hardening what does mean by that we will understand first try to recollect this stress strain diagram see this is the stress strain diagram for the steel which has been which we had a detailed discussion about this in uh, strength of material itself so i'm not bringing it again here tensile test in tensile test we had the detailed discussion so i'm not bringing it again here and this is for aluminium okay this is for aluminium right now if you focus on this region okay if you focus on this region this region alone okay this region is what this region is the linear elastic region where hooke's law can be applied am i right stress is directly proportional to strain but once we cross and once we reach the non linear region that is the plastic deformation region we won't able to apply hooke's law we will able to apply only a law called as power law okay a law called as power law what power law says uh, true stress is equal to k into true strain to the power of this is true strain okay if you want you can take it as epsilon t also okay nothing wrong in that power n okay so the sigma t comma epsilon t is uh, true stress and uh, true strain and uh, this uh, n is nothing but uh, uh, work hardening exponent or strain hardening exponent this k is nothing but strength coefficient okay k is nothing but strength coefficient okay right so here i will come back for this formula a little bit later but now if you observe that uh, steel specimen what is actually happening uh, initially the stress was increasing strain is increasing and again after that uh, upper yield point lower yield point almost same line and suddenly in this region you could see in this region there was increase in the stress sudden increase in the stress uh, if i want to increase the strain am i right so which means i need to apply more amount of load for uh, deforming that particular material if i want to deform that material uh, above this point if i want to deform the material more i want to apply more amount of load which means the strength of the material has increased because of the increase in the strength of that material only i need to apply more load for causing more deformation and this region or this uh, what i could say this phenomena you can you can say to be strain hardening or work hardening so first of all what is mean by work hardening or strain hardening the material strength will increase okay how it is increasing i will explain so for causing further for causing more deformation i need to apply more amount of stress okay so you could see that i need to apply more stress then only the deformation can happen in strength in strain hardening region okay now let us come for this uh, things okay this strain hardening i hope you understood what is mean by strain hardening what is mean by strain hardening there was an increase in the strength suddenly there was an increase in the strength i want to apply more load if i want to cause uh, deformation further but until that point until that point you could see that the load was almost constant but after that i need to apply more load for causing more deformation the strength has increased why it has happened that is given by two scientists called as frank and uh, reed okay so what frank and reed says simple you take uh, you take a material okay and if you if you cold work that particular material if if you take a material and if you cold work that particular material cold work means what um that is uh, cold work means forming right cold forming or cold working so we need to we need to beat it okay we will be beating it we will be deforming it okay so if you are cold working that particular material uh, cold working means the temperature which has to be maintained was less than 0.4 percent point 0.4 of uh, melting point i have already given this in uh, metal forming okay so if you cold work the material okay that materials dislocation count doubles okay that materials dislocation number of dislocation i can say number of dislocation doubles so what does it mean doubles continuously what does it mean if you keep on 
cold working that particular material if you keep on cold working that particular particular material if suppose initially two dislocations are there it will get changed to 4 and then 4 it will change to 8 8 it will change to 16 16 it will change to 32 so the number of dislocation continuously doubles if you keep on doing the cold working process on that particular material okay and because of that what happens you guys already know that if number of dislocation is more okay so more and more more and more of dislocations will be generated and if you take suppose let us take these are the grain grain boundaries okay so what happens as number of dislocation increases these two these dislocations will move and they will pile up and they will pile up near the grain boundaries okay these are dislocations okay the dislocations will pile up near the grain boundaries and that is called as dislocation forest okay so all the dislocations will go and pile up near the grain boundaries okay as the dislocations are piling up near the grain boundaries if suppose if suppose further dislocation suppose let us consider here okay, there was one more dislocation is there and that dis dislocation was i'm i'm continuously applying load okay so you are continuously applying load right you are continuously applying load because you are continuously cold working you are continuously cold working which means you are, you are trying to deform it you are continuously deforming it so you are continuously applying load so as you are applying load the dislocation will move so the dislocation which is present in the grain will start moving and when it when this dislocation okay when this dislocation comes and hits or comes in contact with the dislocation forest there is going to be what is that back stress developed what does it mean by back stress when this dislocation comes and tries uh, tries to go past this grain boundary the dislocation forest which is present in the grain boundary will offer a stress which is going to oppose this dislocation those stresses are nothing but back stresses or also called as residual stresses so what does it mean by this residual stresses let me explain the dislocation which is present okay when it tries to move towards the grind boundary and when it comes into contact with the dislocation forest which is present in the grind boundary the dislocation forest is not going to allow the dislocation to pass pass through the grind boundary it is going to offer a compressive stress that is going to oppose this dislocation and that back stress which is opposing that back stress which is opposing the dislocation moment is nothing but back stress or residual stresses okay now what is going to happen see it's very obvious these dislocation forest itself acting as an obstacle for dislocation motion okay this dislocation forest itself not allowing the dislocation to move freely so that is going to increase the strength and that is what happened that is what happened there that is what happened there so the strength has increased which means i need to apply more 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 load for causing deformation because the dislocation forest was offering a back stress which is not allowing the dislocation to move further if there is no dislocation forest the dislocation will move further will come out yielding will happen nothing is going to be a problem but since due to the present of dislocation forest the uh, the dislocations which tries to come out is not able to come out understood so yielding is that is uh, the strength has increased okay but this work hardening or strain hardening uh, that is the multiplication okay uh, the multiplication of this number of dislocations okay the multiplications of this number of dislocations not going to happen for all the material it completely depends on the it's a material property it completely depends on the material only and that is the reason why i given you this formula okay this number multiplication of dislocation depends on this work hardening exponent okay if work hardening exponent is more then there will be more number of uh, multiplications of dislocations so easily dislocation forest will be formed more back stresses strength will increase strain hardening will happen if work hardening exponent is less for example take the example of aluminium and steel in aluminium there is no strain hardening because the range was something like uh, because for aluminium it is 0.05 and for steel it is 0.3 that is why for 0.3 steel 
uh, work hardening is happening and for aluminium there is no work hardening because uh, work hardening exponent was very less. So now uh, we know that uh, work hardening is something which is depends on the material property. It depends on the work hardening exponent. Uh, aluminium and steel I have given you the example. Suppose, suppose let us do one thing. Okay, stress and strain diagram and let us consider that this is how it's happening and uh, this is where the strain hardening starts. Okay, now you have loaded the member. Okay, you have loaded the member until the strain hardening somewhere here okay, until somewhere here and now you are unloading it okay, you are unloading it so when i load it until strain hardening what that is strain hardening region what will happen there is going to be some amount of back stress which is developed what back stress is doing back stress is not allowing the dislocation to move out in this case let us consider that i am doing a tensile test okay during a tensile test uh, the back stress will be compressive. It will try to pull that dislocation inside itself. Okay, it won't allow it won't allow the dislocation to go out. So it will be compressive. It will try to pull the dislocation inside itself. Okay. Now let us suppose I have loaded until strain hardening region. Now unloading it. Okay, unloading it. And by unloading, I am going to apply stress in opposite direction. I'm going to load it in opposite direction, which means I'm going to apply some compressive load. So if I apply some compressive load, the yielding will happen. Okay, yielding will happen prematurely. So what does it mean by that? Imagine like this. Without doing all this loading and unloading and all, let us consider that 1000 megapascal is the point at which yielding will happen. Okay, yielding will happen generally without all this uh, loading and unloading. But here, now coming to this case, when I am when I am when I am uh, when I am loading it in tensile, okay, when I am loading it in tensile until strain hardening region, let us consider some 400 uh, megapascal of back stress was developed. Okay, 400 mega megapascal of back stress was developed. So I loaded until strain hardening region. Now I am unloading it and I am loading it in uh, in a compressive compressive. That is, I am I am I am loading it in opposite direction. So what happens? This 400 megapascal of back stress is going to support the loading. As it is going to support the loading, in general, if 1000 megapascal is going to be our yield point means, uh, when I'm loading and then unloading in opposite direction, my yield point will occur at, my yield point will occur at 600 megapascal itself. So yield point occurs prematurely. Let me repeat it. In general, if you do compression, compressive stress, I'm just giving an example. Okay, all these numbers are example. In general, if you do compressive, uh, that is compressive st compression stress, 1000 megapascal is the yield point. But what I'm doing now, first I'm applying a tensile test. I'm reaching a strain hardening region. As I'm reaching strain hardening region, there's going to be some residual stress or there's going to be some back stress which is developed. After reaching strain hardening region, I'm unloading it. And directly, I'm I'm uh, I'm applying I'm applying an opposite direction stress. I'm applying opposite loading. As I'm applying opposite loading, this back stress is going to support this compressive loading. And because of that, instead of reaching yield point yield condition at thousand megapascal, it is going to reach the yield condition at six hundred megapascal itself because this four hundred megapascal is supporting it. Understood? So yield point occurs prematurely, and this effect is called as Boschinger effect okay so this effect is called as Boschinger effect so the effect at which uh, that is when I'm when I'm unloading the member from strain hardening region and uh, loading it in opposite direction the yield point occurs prematurely and this uh, effect is nothing but Boschinger effect so the last way by which we can uh, improve the strength increase the strength of the material is grain refinement See, there are two different types of grains. Okay, if you take suppose um, if you take two different types of materials. Okay, if less grain boundaries are present, okay, if less grain boundaries are present, it is called as uh, coarser grain. If suppose more grain uh, boundary, something like this, if more grain boundaries are present, then it is going to be fine grains are finer. Okay. So I hope you got it. We already had some idea about this, right? 
Now, if you take grain boundaries, uh, this is one grain and this is another grain. So, what is the difference? Suppose if this is the orientation of the atom, this is the orientation of the atom in this grain. In the next, because of this grain boundary, presence of this grain boundary, the orientation of the atom in the next grain will be different, right? So we know that. So that is that we discussed it uh, already. So if I if I draw a line like this, okay, there is going to be an angle. We can take that angle to be theta. We have discussed this already. So if more number of grain boundaries are there, then there is going to be more number of change in the orientation. So what happens if orientation changes are more simple? Whenever a dislocation tries to move through the grain boundaries, it has to undergo, it has to give, it has to, uh, we, uh, the dislocation will have some obstacle in uh, crossing the grain boundary. The reason in one grains, the orientation of the atom will be in, in one direction, in another grain, the orientation of atom will be in another direction. And when the dislocation try to cross this grain boundary, okay, when the dislocation try to co cross this grain boundary, it is going to face an obstacle. So, if less number of grain boundaries are there, which means coarser grains, less number of grain boundaries are there, then there won't be an issue. The what is it? The dislocation can cross the grain boundaries without any problem. But if more number of grain boundaries are there, then the dislocation to cross each and every grain boundary, it has to face each and every obstacle. So that the movement of dislocation is going to be difficult if more fine grains are there. Okay, that means if more grain boundaries are there, which means fine grains. So, for finer grains, uh, difficulty in uh, movement of movement of dislocation, since the dislocation moment is difficult, the strength is increasing. Okay, strength increases. So. Finer the grains, more will be the strength. But we already know, I have discussed one more thing also earlier. If grains are more finer, the bond length, okay, the bond length, which is that is the bond length uh, in the grain boundaries will be larger. So it will become less corrosion resistance, right? But we have discussed about it. I hope you remember, right? Less corrosion resistance. So even though less corrosion resistance, it's going to have more strength. How it is going to have more strength? I have given you the reason. The dislocation cannot pass uh, the the, disloc the obstacle. There is going to be more obstacle for the dislocation to pass through since there was more number of grain boundaries in finer grains. Okay, so finer grains are generally uh, generally going to have more strength.